Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll be covering eight crucial illustrator tips that are easy to follow but highly effective. Tip number one is the puppet warp tool. This is something that used to only be available in After Effects, but it allows you to move paths and imagery with a huge amount of control. I'm just going to show you an example here in Illustrator. All you have to do is select Puppet Warp. If it's not on the sidebar, you can click the three dots in the bottom and you'll be able to find it there. It kind of looks like a pinpoint. Then you just create some anchor points in the places that you want to move. So treat it like an arm. You want to put one where the hand is, where the elbow is and where the shoulder is. You'll need to play around a bit sometimes to get it right. And you can see how easy that is to manipulate the illustration. And you can also do this in Photoshop, which is very useful. Tip number two, selective paste. Now we've all made the rookie mistake of hitting send backwards a thousand times to try and get our shape where we want it to be. But all you have to do to avoid this is no command B and command F. So I'm going to select the green shape and press command C. Then I'm going to select the pink shape and press command B. And you'll see that that's just dropped in between the grey square and the pink shape. Now if I copy that again and select the black square and hit command F, it's going to copy in front. So command B for behind and F for in front. Now for a bonus tip. As you go through this, don't just watch what I'm doing. Open up Illustrator and use the tools. Repetition is key to remembering. Tip number three blew my mind for me. Uh, that is the color theme picker tool. So let's just say we've got this layout here. We have the image on the right, text on the left, and they don't really go well together. We've got a bright garish pink with this kind of natural looking photograph. So what we're going to do is select the text, come up here and click the color picker, and then just drag that to the side. And if we pick the eyedropper tool within the color theme window, we can then just drag that across and it will select us a color theme from that photograph. And you can see that looks much better already. You also have some other options within that window where you can select the amount of colors that it actually picks from the photograph and you can manually come in and adjust that as well. Tip number four, master the pen tool. Now I'm just gonna show you how not to use the pen tool. I've just quickly drawn around this leaf using lots of little points. And as you can see, the shape is quite jagged and not very natural looking. So here's how to avoid that. I'll delete that, lock the image with command two so we can trace over it without it moving. And then when I click to create my anchor points, I want to stretch them out in the direction that I want the line to go. And along each side of the leaf, I only want to make two to three maximum anchor points. So I'm going to do the same on the other side of the leaf. Just drag that out. I can actually see it. I only really needed two anchor points there. So I'm going to do the same on the other side, I think. So again, holding down the option key to drag those handles. And there you go. That's looking much smoother and more natural. Tip number five, the blend tool. The blend tool is great for creating repeat patterns that are dynamic and easily editable. So all I'm gonna do is create two shapes here, then come to object, blend, make. So there I've got a repeat pattern, but I don't really want them touching like this. So I'm gonna to come to object, blend again, blend options. You can change this to specified steps. I'm just gonna change that and you can see we've got a bit of spacing now. Now if you press the A key, you can change the position of each shape to change the direction of the pattern. Uh, you can also change the size of one of the shapes at either side to create this kind of effect. As you can see, that's easy to move around. You can also add points into the line to kind of change the curvature or direction of the pattern. And if you come into the blend options again, you can make the shape kind of follow the curve of the line. So that looks a bit smoother. So I'm just going to get rid of that and show you a slightly more interesting use of the blend tool. So I'm just going to draw this curved line here. And we can create some really kind of dynamic patterns with this technique. Uh, so again, click blend, make, and then blend options again to adjust that. Then if we come back to our direct selection tool with A, we can then select one of the points and move that around. And you can see it starts to create quite an interesting pattern, especially when we start to move the handle points around. We can cross them over to create a really sort of dynamic shape. You can even come into the stroke panel and change the type of line that you want to use. You could add dashes to it or add some thicks and thins. There's a lot of fun you can have with the blend tool. Tip number six, perfect rotation. Now, do you ever look at designs like this and wonder how they get all the sort of circular patterns that are going on in here so perfect? You wouldn't be able to create this without being able to accurately rotate shapes a specified distance. Now, I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's take this leaf shape, for example. 
I'm going to hit R for rotate and press option and click where I want the central point to be. Then in the rotate window, I'm going to click preview so I can see what I'm doing. And I want to put 360 divided by the amount of shapes I want it to make up that circle. And I'm not going to click OK, I'm going to click copy. And you can see that's just made one increment circle. Now if you hit command D, that's going to duplicate that movement. But if you hold command D, that will just keep going until I say stop. So there we just about have our circle and it wasn't that easy. Tip number seven, pattern brush. Now I wanna create a dragon towel kind of running along the bottom of this Chinese New Year invite, which is gonna be quite a complex shape. So I wanna create a pattern brush to do that. So what I do is create one section of what I want the overall pattern to be. Make sure it's a compound path and not in a clipping mask. So I'm gonna make sure I've got my shape selected. I'm gonna come down to brushes and hit new brush and then pattern brush. Now you can see that's created a pattern out of my compound shape. I'm going to make sure I've got stretch to fit selected and click OK. Now I just take the pen tool and draw a path how I want the shape to be. Just smooth that out a little bit. And then I'm going to hit my new pattern brush. And you can see that's created a really smooth sort of dragon tail pattern. And I can just adjust the anchor points how I want them. If you double click the pattern brush, you can come in and change the size of it as well by dragging the slider up the top. It's easy as that. On to the last tip, which is hide object. If you're working in a file with lots of layers, it can be difficult to select the shape or image that you want. And there's a lot of ways to get around this, like locking layers, locking objects, but I find the best is the hide tool. So if you just select the object you want to hide, commit, hit command free, that will just hide the objects. And you can do whatever you want underneath it. And when you want to bring it back, you hit command option three. And that will bring the object back. Thanks for watching today guys, I hope you found it helpful. For more creative tips and tricks, just click through to my next video.